you're sick of having coffee that you just can't enjoy at home, but you're stuck on what to do and you don't know why it tastes so bad. In this five part series, we wanna help break down some of those common pain points or coffee variables to make better coffee at home. Let's break these common pain points into simple terms that are relatable to what you would be doing in your brews every single day at home. We've got grind size slash brew time, agitation, water temperature, water quality, and of course, coffee quality. Before we dive in guys, please don't forget to subscribe if you wanna keep up to date, get involved in some more coffee content that's coming your way. And of course, if you did learn anything from this video, please don't forget to give us a big old like. So now that we know what the variables are, let's dive in straight away. In this first episode, we're going to be talking about grind size and brew time. Now, first of all, what is it? How do they affect each other? Grind size is how fine or how coarse we grind our coffee, and the brew time is how we track our brews. Now, these correlate together and work as one. The finer you grind, the slower the brew time, and vice versa. The coarser you grind, the faster you brew time, depending on how you brew. <laughs> Our first tip is play around with your grind size, play around with tracking your brew times as well. Now it's important that we need to understand what we're doing when we're extracting coffee. We are trying to dissolve the soluble content. Now when we extract coffee, we're looking to dissolve between 18 to 22% of the soluble content. Now either side of that is what we refer to as under extraction or over extraction. So let's take a V60 for example. How we're going to grind? We're going to grind a medium to coarse grind. We're gonna pour our water, it's going to drip through. And we're usually aiming for about of a brew time, about two and a half minutes to three minutes. Of course, this is depending on your recipe. This is my recipe. Now, if I wanna fluctuate how much of that soluble content we are dissolving or extracting, we would play around with the grind size. We would go finer, we would go coarser, which ultimately affects the flavor profile. I know this seems like a lot of words or a lot of mumbo jumbo, so how can we put this into practice? Simply think, how is your coffee tasting? Let's take this for example. Delicious, because I brewed it. Let's pretend that was disgusting. Let's say that was really bitter, quite ashy, uh, very mouth drying feels, like really unpleasant kind of uh, bitter, not enjoyable flavors whatsoever. The first thing I would look at would be my grind size. So what I would want to do is grind my coffee coarser to let that water pass through quicker, dissolve less of that, get a nicer flavor profile. So let's take it to the other side. If your coffee is thin, astringent, sour, lacking depth, lacking flavor, try grinding finer to get more out of your coffee. Have a play around. Let us know what you've experienced, what kind of techniques that you've also tried. Now it's really important to remember that you can't just focus on one of these pain points all of them have a knock-on domino effect. Some brewing methods will use more of the other variables, or they might be more prominent or present, let's say, than other brewing methods, but it's about trial and error and finding what works. Now, through this series of videos, we're going to try and give you as many tips as we can to get you through these common pain points to essentially get you a better cup each time at home. Another tip that I wanna share with you is investing in a set of scales. Now, the reason I say that is because it's so much easier to track the time and the weight of your brew through using a smart scale. Now, you don't have to go all fanchish manchi and spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars. The base scales, we'll put a link in the description as well, the ones that we use, as well as some of the uh, cheaper options too, um, that help track and weigh your brews along the way as well. That way you can start to record how much coffee you're putting in, looking at the time as it comes out and adjusting your grind size and watching how that changes the effect on it. Now, hopefully you can apply some of these tips at home to make a better cup. So next we're gonna move on to agitation. So stay tuned for that one. <laughs> 